Have you guys ever dealt with a professor or read an article that uses overly sophisticated flowery language to prove a point that's relatively simple to understand? Most of the time is just to make themselves sound more sophisticated because of the fact that they feel like they need to do that in order to better validate their original point as opposed to giving us the Twitter version of the situation. Well, recently I walked onto a campus and this was in Paris. It's supposed to be one of the more advanced schools in the fields of political science. And I say that not as like a rhetorical waving my willy down trying to like validate myself in any sort of reason, but rather instead kind of provide context as to where we are. Now, the reason why I mention that is because there's only a handful of us selected for said program who are across the world, most of which uh, the people here don't know English as their first language. Now, does that mean that they are more or less intelligent than the rest of us as a result of this type of obstacle? Well, I don't really think so. I had a professor recently who gave us some reading materials that calls out this entire intellectualized or over-intellectualized sometimes culture that academics has, and I think you guys would appreciate it. So essentially the story goes like this. There's a sociologist who was ranting once upon a time about the fact that nobody actually knows what the hell sociologists think. Most of the time we think that they are going over problems that the rest of us easily understand. For example, why does racism exist? And you can go into the in-group and out-group explanations, so on and so forth. You don't fully understand the culture. You get the point. However, what this person was saying was the reason why sociologists do not succeed is because they do not branch out and discuss what they're learning with the average person. Supplemented with the fact they don't branch out into other areas of academics as well, like reach out to people with different specializations. Now, one of the reasons why he said this was because of the fact that academics use language that is a little bit more intellectual or long and sophisticated and not relevant to the average person. So the average people don't want to read about the very things that they're discussing. Thus, them losing uh, jobs in fields that they would be able to create more of a direct impact. So for example, you have sociologists who are ranting about the fact that they don't get into presidential campaigns. And one of the reasons is because sociology is not widely respected according to this sociologist. Well, I can tell you to get into these schools, you have to study sometimes, if you wanna be hyper competitive, 50 vocabulary words that nobody's ever used in their entire life to try to get into these programs. So oftentimes you'd study for a matter of weeks, matter of months, 50 vocab words every single day to try to get into these programs. Now, do I feel like I'm better off because I know these words? Absolutely not. Because most of the words you don't even use in the general public, and so it's pretty much pointless. It's like me learning words in a different language that are not applicable to the people that I'm trying to talk to. Okay, well, with that said, I have to agree with this individual. As somebody who's stepping onto the campus with these people who are supposed to be, you know, relatively intelligent, none of us know what any of these scholars are saying. As a matter of fact, this individual, Henry Molotich, I probably butchered it, it's like M-O-L-O-T-C-H. Anyway, I, ju I just wanna show his name or throw his name out there to give a little bit of love to him. But what he was saying was, look, not even these professors know what each other are saying most of the time. And also on top of that, most of these peer reviewed journals make no sense. And his explanation or his rationality for why people shouldn't use such intellectual words is pretty simple. And I think it's interestingly enough to make me wanna make a video about this. And his rationality for not using that language is pretty simple. If it takes you 10 times longer to read a article that uses more flowery language, as opposed to using the same amount of time in reading a few more articles that use less flowery language, are you more intelligent because you read the one that uses fancier language? Or are you more intelligent from reading more articles? I think that's pretty compelling, particularly because if you fully understand a topic, personally, I think that you should be able to describe said topic in a simplistic manner. And if you can't do that, you probably don't understand the subject to begin with. So I thought this was compelling.
particularly because I was reading that article that was recommended for me as a way to procrastinate an article that was 50 pages long using flowery language that nobody understands that this individual probably had to use a thesaurus to even look up to even understand because of the fact that he wants to sound smarter than what his concepts originally imply. I hope, I know I'm like kind of ranting. What is it right now? It's the middle of the night right now in France. I was reading this article I just finished. I felt like somebody should probably know this, but I think you guys would agree. And I think, I'm, I'm gonna go a step deeper. Personally, I think what it really is in academics is that they wanna make us think that their concepts are better than your concepts as a result of the fact that they have read more articles. In order to hide all of that, they use language that you don't understand to make you think that they are smarter than what they really are. And as a result, you should believe their concepts or their theories over yours. Not because they have information to be able to back that, but rather instead because they're using fancy words. If they want to confuse you, they might as well speak a different language. <laughs>